passion. It l lies in all of us, sleeping, waiting, and though unwanted, unbidden, it will stir, open its jaws and howl. It speaks to us, guides us. Passion rules us all, and we obey. What other choice do we have? Passion is the source of is the source of our finest moments. The joy of love, the clarity of hate, and the ecstasy of grief. It hurts sometimes more than we can bear. If we could live without passion, maybe then we'd find peace. But we would be hollow, empty rooms, shuttered and dank. Without passion, we'd tr be truly dead. Yeah, I know it's another episode that starts with a quote, but the quote's really good and... <laughs> Yeah, it fits with, with this week's, well, with this episode's theme, I think. Um, Brian and Wednesday challenged us to say, um, tell us what our passions are. And since the quote is all about passion, hey, um, the quote's from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Very good show. Do not mock it. It is the best. Now let's continue. Um, so my passions. Uh, I d have to say that one of, of my great passions is... Musicals. Um, I love musicals with every little inch of my soul. Now, um, music in a sense is also my passion, but to me, music is emotion that you can hear. And in musicals, the music is written specifically. The music it has a specific job. It's written for a specific emotion. So therefore, the emotions in it are so clear and it's just so easy to get lost in it. like um music conventional music does have this as well but it's not as targeted or it's it doesn't have as much purpose in a sense although it can have as much purpose but the meaning differs from person to person or interpretation to interpretation so for me musicals just look clear um when I first saw the Phantom of the Opera, <laughs> which, uh, which I got this little necklace. See, they're 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 expensive, by the way. But anyway, um, when I first saw it, um, just a couple of weeks ago, after the prologue, um, when they're raising up the chandelier, I was so overwhelmed at that. <laughs> I I almost started crying, cause. It was just so good. And um and going to see a friend's in her high school productions of Le Miserable was a very interesting experience because um since I go to an all girls high school and I've been in a couple of the musicals, I'm used to girls playing guy parts. So seeing guys actually playing guy parts and singing was interesting. I mean I've it's like, you know, like, a bunch of, um, like, professional musicals and such and such where the guys play guy parts and girls play girl parts. But this is like a high school production. I was kind of used to having girls play guy parts. Although there were some girls playing guy parts, though, which is, I don't know. I, I don't I actually mind who plays the part. It's just, it's just interesting. It's just interesting to me, I think. My last and what last passion I'm gonna tell you about is something. It's like singing for me, which I am extremely passionate about. But for me, singing is more about survival. It's more about coping, and writing. For that is like is that is like that for me too. I love writing. I love being able to make stuff up to have these words just pop into my head and from which. From where I have no idea, but it's also a coping mechanism to get everything out, to get <sighs> when things get dark, one could say, um that's what I use to get out um like and when I read back of some of the stuff I write, it's it seems like I cannot believe that I wrote that. Because guess in a way, it wasn't me who wrote that. I was in a different space when I wrote it. 
I was feeling a different emotion. I don't know, but, um, like, I'm going to read you some of the po poems I've written, um, when times have been kind of rough, I guess, to show you Um, now, uh, I, I wrote this poem, um, this year, it was, it's in February, actually, um, on the first, uh, kind of in a bad place then, really kind of, um, and it's, it's called Drowning in Silence, um, Shattering faces all around, and nobody notices as she drowns. Absorbed in pens and paper and text, nobody sees what will happen next. Knives and death are on her mind, bright red rubies she never will find. Only rivers will, sh will she be seen with, yet no one imagines the scene this begins with. With a heart like lead and a numbness of dread, are we surprised that she drowned? Yeah. Um... So let, let me just um, tell you all that uh, when I was writing this, I was not, I, I was in a dark place, a very dark place, and I can get those dark places, especially at night, but I am never suicidal, so I just let me you know so no one freaks out, because if I had heard someone recite that poem saying they're roasted, I would freak out. Um, so yeah, don't worry, I'm getting help, everything's fine. Um... <laughs> I have hope and love. <laughs> love. It hurts, yeah, but not having that hope hurt more. Thank you, Kujimus. Your comment. Your comment helped me. So if now, PSC, just keep on loving and hoping, even though there's no reason to hope, even though there's no chance of your hope coming true, just keep holding it. When love and emotion are combined with devotion, you, you know you've got something rare. The music in your head tells you that you're not dead. Or that you're not there. The world around is strange, but honey don't complain because we're all fighting the same. The war. Over and over and over again. The war is love. The love is war. We all fight. We, we all fight for someone with, with all fight for someone that someone that 